560 The Answer online at 560theanswer.com on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa-powered smart speaker, and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan, and in for Amy J this morning, John Cass, renowned columnist, formerly of the Tribune, currently of JohnCassNews.com, where subscriptions are fifty bucks a year, five bucks a month. Well, I don't give it away like the Tribune. Four bucks does. a month, five bucks a month, fifty bucks a year. Fifty bucks a year, five dollars a month. Right. Uh, but you get a discount if you go yearly. Okay. And you know what? You get to read some interest. I think some very good Chicago writers. I still haven't uh, captured that one writer I've been trying my best to get. I'm still trying to get him. His name, you know him. His name's Dan Proff. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, you know, I will do so at some point when I feel that I'm ready to take that step. Red carpet. Smooching <laughs> on the ass is not going to happen with me. <laughs> well, if you want to write, you know, if you want to write for John Cass News, all you got to do is drop a line to John at John Cass News, and uh, I'll be interested to read it. It is a good variety of uh, authors, a stable that you're building, just like uh, guests that we built on this show. And uh, so I do highly recommend JohnCassNews.com. You hear us reference uh, the columns on this show quite often. Greg Gansky, um, maybe Darren th- Geary. Maybe you can get our next uh, guest if the Manhattan Institute will uh, release him. <laughs> Judge Glock is a contributing editor of City Journal and author of The Dead Pledge, The Origins of the Mortgage Market and Federal Bailouts, 1913 to 1939. Uh, he's uh, written recently about uh, a problem we have in Chicago, these encampments, and the encampments that were once just of the indigenous homeless have now expanded to include uh, our migrant friends, John, uh, Brandon Johnson, BLM Brandon, uh, he's the mayor of Chicago now, don't you know? Uh, he had this to say the other day about said migrants that are sleeping, still sleeping at police stations in some parts of the city. My position has not changed. Um, that transitioning uh, individuals out of police stations is still top of mind. Finding more um, adequate places for shelter. Uh, for families, that is top of mind. Having full wraparound services uh, for families who wish to call the city of Chicago their home, that is still top of mind. It's top of mind, but um, as they... What's this? JKP, whatever her name is? KJP? Uh, yeah, whatever KJP, White House spokeswoman. He does sound a little bit that top of mind. I'll right. circle back. Oh, that's Jen Psaki. But anyway, um, but the problem, well, if it is a problem, the problem, if it is a problem, that Brandon Johnson is having is as they do this road show going neighbor to neighbor to say, we're going to use the old South Shore High School, we're going to use this spot, we're going to use in in uh, Lakeview, we're going to use that spot on the northwest side. The residents are showing up. They're not clapping along. They're pushing back. Black now, people don't like, th- let's be honest, black people don't like being pushed back in line. They don't. And they're not going to... St- Sit for. I guess they. W- I guess Democrats believe that they're so stupid that they will sit for it. Yeah, but I think. I think they. They. You know, I the don't power. Think they're that stupid. Well, the power structure in big cities is such that I. I, I think you would. You wouldn't fault them for saying, "Look, they're going to protest. We know we're going to get some heat, but it's sound and fury signifying not very much." Because in the end, they're going to come back for that government cheese, and we're dangling on a hook. Uh, Judge Glock. Contributing Editor City Journal joins us now. Judge, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, so, you know, you write about uh, the, and you, you write specifically, I'll quote you here, Americans have stopped listening to the activists who are trying to shame them about not uh, lying uh, prone while uh, they uh, you know, take over spaces on behalf of the unhoused, as they would call them. Um so, yeah, we see that in Chicago, at least in terms of uh, rhetorical pushback. But at the end of the day, it seems to me that those activists you write about are still winning the uh, battle in the big cities. 
Well, they're certainly winning the battle in a lot of big cities. But as I note in the article, people have found a lot of different ways to push back. You've seen major laws uh, against homeless encampments passed in places like Texas, Missouri, Tennessee, uh, Georgia. Uh, you've seen lawsuits against some of the cities by a very broad, diverse group of different interests who are sick of giant homeless encampments in parks and in sidewalks. Uh, you've seen cities, uh, even in some of these blue cities, finally start to take action and start to crack down, pass new laws against homeless encampments, pass new laws pushing people into shelters, into services, because uh, they know that the vast, vast majority of Americans think it's unacceptable to allow large encampments on city streets and parks. That's just no way to actually have a functional city. But where is the, where's the payback? When I see New York treating the idea of kicking kids out of camps or out of swimming pools so they can uh, cater to the homeless, and Chicago doing the same thing, and there's no, there's no punishment for that. There's no political price to pay, and they'll keep well, doing it. It, it, it just takes I, – I would like to think in most places it takes time. Some places, for whatever reason, the politicians have managed to push this issue into the background and claim that it's not a focus. But when, you, when people are actually polled about this, when people are actually get to vote directly on this, you find even in the bluest cities in America – you have overwhelming majorities that are opposed to these sorts of policies. Now, I note that in my hometown of Austin, Texas, uh, one of the, the most liberal cities in the country, uh, they had a city council vote 11 to 0, no a unanimous vote uh, to allow camping on public streets uh, and uh, sidewalks, etc. Uh, and yet you had, when the people got a chance to vote on it, you had 58% saying, no, that's unacceptable. We are going to ban camping again. And they reinstated the camping ban. So when you give people a chance to say something, to speak out against it, they're over, overwhelmingly on one side. But it's, you know, but then you, you sort to get to John's point a little bit, too. Then you get to the enforcement side of it. And so, uh, I mean, it's sort of like uh, Eric Adams now talking about the need for border security, uh, you know, a strong proponent of sanctuary city, sanctuary state. Uh, of course, he governs over one sanctuary city. Um, and uh, the uh, implications of the policy choices of big city mayors like Eric Adams being visited upon them, they don't like it so much. They want the federal government to give money. They want the federal government to get serious about border security all of a sudden. But you still have them uh, acting uh, to prop up the policies that uh, – they have uh, stated their support for, and, and we see that in Chicago as well. Yeah, it, it's, it's unfortunate, but you're also beginning to see a, a change, even in, in people like, as, as you know, Mayor uh, Eric Adams. So Mayor Eric Adams has now talked about uh, removing, ending the legal settlement that requires them to house every migrant into the city, which is completely unacceptable now because 50% of all of their shelter capacity is now being used for migrants and refugees instead of local uh, homeless uh, individuals. Uh, you have Mayor Eric Adams also uh, enforcing new laws for, uh, for mental health treatment, requiring more commitment uh, by police officers, putting, helping getting people who are clearly suffering from schizophrenia or other severe mental disorders into hospitals or treatment. You're having him begin to fight back against uh, people sleeping on the subways. This is no longer acceptable to have the subways basically be an open shelter for anybody who wants to, who wants to stay there for uh, hours at a time. So you're seeing pushback. Again, not as much as you would probably like or think, but people are beginning to be fed up with it, and you're seeing even in these very blue cities uh, people push back. Well, it's going to be really interesting that if there is a real sh moment where this gets to a, a point of a showdown between big s blue city mayors and the administration, because, you know, whatever you do at the municipal level is going to be insufficient as long as you don't, as long as the tide into cities like Chicago, New York is not step systems, which is now currently accommodating a lot of these migrants. This is these systems were set up to temporarily shelter people who are down on their luck for short periods of time, and that's what they should be returned to doing instead of sheltering basically anybody who has crossed the border and needs indefinite shelter uh, paid for by the city. He is Judge Glock, contributing editor of City Journal, author of The Dead Pledge, The Origins of the Mortgage Market and Federal Bailouts, 1913 to 1939. Do check out his piece over at City Journal. 
end of the encampments, question mark. We certainly want the answer to that in Chicago. Uh, Judge Glock, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. And he joined us on the turnkey.pro answer line. This is the morning show. More Chicago radio listeners are choosing. This is Chicago's morning answer on AM560. The answer. TV news. It's a love-hate relationship. Well, let's be honest. More hate. We agree. That's why we're different. Salem News Channel has assembled the greatest collection of conservative minds all in one place. Home to Charlie Kirk, Hugh Hewitt, Eric Metaxas, and more. There's finally a place on TV for lovers of freedom like you. Watch anytime on any screen, free, 24-7. Find what you're looking for at snc.tv. That's snc.tv. It's hot and humid outside, but your basement or crawl space shouldn't feel that way. High humidity above 60% will activate mold spores, which results in unhealthy air throughout.